Hello, Internet. Hewlett here with a very sweaty burn and learn. I have leapt straight off the torture machine to talk to you. I've snuck into the cave because lovely Maria is here um, uh, tidying up the place, and uh, so I didn't want to get in her way um, and wanted to avoid as much vacuuming and banging around as possible uh, so I could have a quick burn and learn update with you. Um, so i uh, got a dog update for you and a new book that I'm reading, um, which is fascinating. So um, I will get to that as soon as I tell you that a burn and learn is my bid to remain fit and alive long enough to raise my amazing amazing son and enjoy the twilight years with my brilliant, beautiful wife, Jane. Hate exercise is boring, so I like to learn something while I'm doing it, and then I like to share what I've learned with you in the sweatiest way possible, and look at this. I am certainly doing that today. Um, my dog, my beautiful old mutt, Mars, um, is very sick, um, and I'm going to give you the Spock update. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to go without any emotion on this. I'm just going to tell you what's happening, and then I'm going to move on to my, to the, to the learn part of my, of my burn and learn. Um, we, I called the vet yesterday um, who specializes in coming to the house and, and just, you know, uh, uh, sort of final preparations and, uh, and, uh, and also, you know, putting dogs down when necessary. Um, he's going to come and see Mars and just make sure that now is, in fact, the time. I've spoken to Bratlett about it, um, who is obviously very upset, but um, we talked about it and we said that, you know, it's, we got to stop being, we can't be selfish. We got to, got to be brave and we got to, um, got to make, uh, make the mutt comfortable. And, um, so Jane and I and Baz are all on the same page and we're all going to be there. And, uh, um, if it comes to that tonight, then, um, then he will have a, uh, uh, a very warm send off. Um, and as I have explained to Bratlett, it's horrible for those of us left behind, but you know what? That's what we do for, for the, for the dogs we love. So, uh, in our, in our, in our mind, I mean, I know everyone has different opinions on this stuff and, and you're welcome to those. I just, um, in our case, I feel like when we got him, uh, we were told he had two years to live because he had a terrible hip deficient hip problem. And so basically we've been worrying this is gonna happen for 14 years now. So he's had a good, very, very good run at it. And uh, we're gonna try very hard to focus on the positive, on the happy stuff um, uh, and not uh, not get too all, uh, all worked up about it. So I'm gonna move on before I do exactly that um, and uh, tell you about this new book that I've started today, which is called um, uh, Systems Thinking. Is that right? Uh, let me just see if I've got it here. It is called The Systems Thinker. Um, and it is a book by, what is his name, Albert uh, Rutherford. And uh, I just, I don't know why it caught my eye, but I was sort of flicking through seeing what was my next, my next project. And he just sort of struck me in that one of the first things he says in his, um, in his introduction is, is how his experience of teaching people has taught him how you can't know everything and how important it is not to know everything and uh, how important it is to instill, uh, again, a lifelong love of learning um, and, to, and to have that for yourself. And um, so what he's done is he started working on a book about uh, systems thinking. So how do you how do you take all the little things, little bits of information that we've been studying, the way the sciences is focused in on very specific things, and is now beginning to step back and go, how do each of these things influence each other? Um, and um, it seems very scientific and down, down to earth. I mean, it's dealing with the sciences. Um, uh, but it's, it's just saying, like, how do we step back and see, you know, what are unforeseen consequences or benefits of the things that we're doing? And, you know, we are moving at such a rapid pace with technological development and advancement of computers and, and, and genetics and all sorts of stuff, we are going to see those results much faster than we used to. I mean, whereas, um, you know, like the green um, uh, uh, agricultural revolution has led to a decimation of the bee population and some environmental concerns and also fed billions of people, uh, you know, that happened over a span of, of decades, whereas this the things we're doing now could could impact our lifetime, even for you know old fossils like me. So, uh, really interesting book. I will keep you posted on that. And um, I have got to run because I've got a really exciting meeting with an educational uh, consultant or educational professional. This amazing woman who's been helping us with uh, with Bratlett and his and our concerns about his his learning. Um, uh, and education. Um, and uh, so uh, she and I share an interest in this assistive technology and she was she was quite interested in the idea that I was using it to teach kids STEM and STEAM. And I've come up with another great idea to do it um, with some Xbox stuff, which I'm really excited about for this year's Tech Terrors. Um, so um, I will uh, I'll have to touch on that at some point soon. In fact, maybe that will be one of my little science videos that I'm doing. Please do go and watch my Let's Talk Science video because I'm going to start doing 
those. Um, I'll be doing another one this week and uh, hoping to have one of those out every Tuesday is the, is, the, is the evil plan. We'll see if I can stick to that or not. Uh, um, and uh, obviously I will keep you posted on, on, on Marslet. And um, thank you all for, for your comments and, and you know, well wishes on this stuff. I, uh, I do appreciate it. Um, but uh, at the same time, I feel like I feel like we got it handled. I think we're doing the we're doing the right stuff. So um, until we geek again, sweat or not, here I come. Cheerio.